The National Museum in New Delhi, also known as the National Museum of India, is one of the largest museums in India. Established in 1949, it holds variety of articles ranging from pre-historic era to modern works of art. It functions under the Ministry of Culture, Government of India. The museum is situated on the corner of Janpath and Maulana Azad Road. The blueprint of the National Museum had been prepared by the Gwir Committee set up by the Government of India in 1946. The museum has around 200,000 works of art, both of Indian and foreign origin, covering over 5,000 years. It also houses the National Museum Institute of History of Arts, Conservation and Museology on the first floor which was established in 1983 and now is a deemed university since 1989, and runs master's and doctoral level courses in history of art, conservation and museology. History The roots of the National Museum begin with an exhibition of Indian art and artefacts at the Royal Academy in London in the winter of 1947–48. At the end of the London exhibition, the exhibition curators had decided to display the same collection intact in India before returning the artefacts to their individual museums. The Indian exhibition was shown at the Rashtrapati Bhawan in 1949, and was so successful that it led to the decision to form a permanent national museum. On 15 August 1949, the National Museum was formally inaugurated by the then Governor-General of India, Chakravarti Rajagopalachari. At that time, it was decided that until a permanent home could be found for the collection, it would continue to be housed at the Rashtrapati Bhawan. The cornerstone of the present museum building was laid by Jawaharlal Nehru, the then Prime Minister of India, on 12 May 1955, and the building formally opened to the public on 18 December 1960. Today, the museum is administered and funded by the Ministry of Culture and Ministry of Tourism. Topic departments and collections Presently, there are several departments in the National Museum. Pre-history archaeology Archaeology Manuscripts Numismatics and Epigraphy Paintings Arms and Armor Decorative Arts Central Asian Antiquities Pre-Columbian Art Jewelry Anthropology Education Public Relations Publication Conservation Display Collections of the National Museum covers nearly all the departments. It represents almost all disciplines of art, archaeology sculptures in stone, bronze and terracotta, arms, armor, decorative arts, jewelry, manuscripts, miniatures and tanjore paintings, textiles, numismatics, epigraphy, Central Asian antiquities, anthropology, pre-Columbian American and Western art collections. The museum has in its possession over 200,000 works of art, of both Indian and foreign origin, covering more than 5,000 years of the rich cultural heritage of different parts of the world. Its rich holdings of various creative traditions and disciplines which represents a unity amidst diversity, an unmatched blend of the past with the present and strong perspective for the future, brings history to life. <laughs> <laughs> Building The National Museum Building has two floors. It has a rotunda around which the structure is based. Topic Collections Topic Harappan Gallery The museum has various artifacts from the Harappan civilization also known as Indus Valley Civilization or Indo Saraswati. The whole collection of this gallery represents the advanced technology and sophisticated lifestyle of the Harappan people. Most of the objects on display are permanent loans from the Archaeological Survey of India. Most famous among the objects are the priest head, the dancing girl made in bronze and belongs to the early Harappan period, skeleton excavated from Rikigari in Haryana, terracotta images of mother goddess and clay pottery. Apart from these the gallery has sculptures in bronzes and terracotta, bone objects, ivory, steatite, semi-precious stones, painted pottery and jewellery items. Many seals have been discovered during numerous excavations. These seals were probably used for trading purposes. These seals depict bulls, elephants, unicorns, tigers, crocodiles, unknown symbols. On one of the seal, there is the depiction of Pasupati, proto-Shiva of present age. The gallery presents the vibrancy of human civilization in India at par with the contemporary civilizations of Mesopotamia, Egypt and China. Among the artifacts, the most significant is the dancing girl which is a 4.5-inch bronze statue. 
It was discovered from Mohenjo-daro. The name Dancing Girl was coined by Sir John Marshall. It is made by the lost wax method. The Chola bronzes and the Dokra castings are still made this way. Maurya, Shunga and Satvahana Arts Gallery The gallery has objects from the 4th century BCE to the 1st century BCE. It has objects spanning three major dynasties, the Mauryas, the Shungas and the Satvahanas. Objects in the gallery have Greek influence characterized by the mirror-like finishing. The gallery also houses fragments of railings from various ancient stupas that are carved on with episodes from Buddha's life. A major object is the one showing Sage Asita's visit to baby Siddhartha and the Barhat railings that depicts the story related to the relics associated with Buddha by the sage Drona. A typical feature of the period to which objects in the gallery belongs to is that the sculpture do not depict Buddha in the physical form. He is always shown using symbols like the Dharma Chakra, the Bodhi tree, empty throne, footprints, etc. Kushana Gallery This gallery has art objects from the Kushan period 1st, 3rd century CE. The major school of arts were the Gandhara School of Art and the Mathura School of Art. The Gandhara school had huge influence of Greek iconography and the themes were mainly Buddhist. Most prominent among the objects is the standing Buddha, made in grey schist stone in Gandhara school of arts and it belongs to the 2nd century CE. This period was the first time when Buddha was shown in physical form. The Mathura school of arts had primary themes of Buddhism, Jainism and Brahmanism while the Gandhara arts were primarily of Buddhist themes. Other sculptures include the Kubar, Hindu god of fortune, the Chatramukhi Shivlinga, the Bodhisattva, and the Jain votive plaques. Topic: <laughs> Gupta Gallery. As the name suggests, this gallery exhibits artifacts from the Gupta dynasty, 4th-6th centuries CE. Mathura and Sarnath were the main centers of artistic activity. Under the patronage of Gupta rulers, sculptures attained a perfection of form that set the standard for artistic beauty for the coming centuries. Major developments in iconography took place during this period. The sculptures started depicting beautifully proportioned figures with clear features. At the entrance, there are two statues made of terracotta. The statues are of goddesses Ganga and Yamuna. Ganga stands on her vehicle, Makara, which is a hybrid creature having the body of a crocodile and the tail of a fish and she holds a full pot of water. On the other hand, Yamuna stands on her vehicle which is a turtle and she also holds a pot of water. They were placed at the entrance of temple symbolizing a dip in the sacred rivers for purification. Sculptures depicting scenes from the epics of Ramayana and Mahabharata Sculptures of Hindu gods and goddesses Medieval Arts Gallery The sculptures from the medieval period are divided into two categories, early and late. The artifacts from the respective periods are divided into two galleries. Early medieval artifacts This gallery has sculptures ranging from the 7th to 10th centuries. After the fall of the Gupta Empire, the Indian subcontinent was divided and it was controlled by different dynasties in different parts of India like Palas in the east Maitrakas in the west Vardhanas and Pratiharas in the north Pallavas, Cholas and Chalukas in the south There was a general decline in the artistic quality because of the limited number of master craftsmen and the large number of temples being built. <laughs> Late medieval artifacts This gallery has sculptures ranging from the 10th to 13th centuries. The country was further sub-divided into a number of separate principalities during this period. Hoysalas and Nayakas in the south Paramars and Chandelas in the north Gajapatis and Sinas in the east Chahamanas Chohans in the west The main artifacts in this gallery are Sun God Saraswati, the goddess of music, learning and intelligence. 
Carved in marble, the statue from Palu, Rajasthan is a highly sophisticated and delicate work. Topic: <laughs> Decorative Arts Gallery. Decorative arts refer to arts concerned with the design and decoration of objects that are prized for their utility, rather than for their purely aesthetic qualities. Ceramics, pottery, furniture, textiles, glassware, metalware and jewelry are all included under decorative arts. The decorative arts section is also divided into two galleries. <laughs> decorative Arts Gallery 1 This gallery gives a glimpses of three collections of the museum, ivory, jade and ceramics. The ivory group has several Hindu and Christian religious figures. The jade section showcases the utilitarian objects, while the glazed tiles and blue-white pottery are in the ceramic group. The gallery also has two interesting themes, thrones of India, and games and leisure in the past. The theme of thrones shows the evolution of the seat of power. From the low flat seats of antiquity to the modern armed chair, the journey of the throne is a fascinating story. An intricately carved home shrine and some metal Hindu and Jain pitakas small seats for keeping idols for home shrines are also present. The jewel-studded throne of the king of Varanasi is one of the best example to show power. The games section has rattles, yo-yo, gamesmen of chess and chopar. Tops made of different materials with different designs are also exhibited. These artifacts combine the aesthetic and artistic elements to everyday objects used for games. Topic: <laughs> Decorative Arts Gallery 2. This gallery has artifacts from the proto-historic period to the present day. The variety, quality and media did increase with the taste and status of different generations and the process is uneven today. This gallery exhibits metalware, jewelry and wooden objects. Most notable among the wooden objects are the Vahana on display. Topic miniature Paintings Gallery The museum has over 17,000 miniature paintings. The gallery is divided according to the places and time where the schools of arts flourished. The paintings show the rich heritage of Indian miniature paintings. These paintings belong to major styles such as Mughal, Dakani, Central India, Rajasthani, Pahari and many sub-styles relating to the period from 1000 CE to 1900 CE. It includes paintings on palm leaf, cloth, wood, leather, painted manuscripts, covers on wood and hardboard and thankas on canvas. The major theme of these miniatures are Kalpasutra, Ramayana, Mahabharata, Bhagavata Purana, Durgasapta Sati, Ragamala, Baramasa, Panchatantra, Vishnu Purana, Shanama and Babarnama. <laughs> Mughal miniature paintings Miniature painting flourished during Mughal rule. Emperor Jahangir and Shah Jahanan were great patrons of art. In their courts, the painters adopted themes ranging from portraitures to lanzas, durbar scenes and processions for their works. The Dakani style was a fusion of Islamic idiom with indigenous art styles and of local classical traditions with elements of Persian and European Renaissance. <laughs> Central India miniature paintings Paintings from Central India include Topic. Rajasthan miniature paintings Rajasthani miniatures flourished mainly in Mewar, Bundi, Kota, Kishangar, Jaipur, Jodhpur and Bikaner. Mewar miniatures are illustrating Hindu mythological themes. Bundi and Kota miniatures excel in composition compactness. Hunting scenes are Kota's speciality. Bikaner excels in portrayal. Kishangar is known for its Bani Tani, which portrays the model of an idealized and elegant woman. Topic: <laughs> Pahari miniature paintings. Pahari schools flourished mainly at Basali, Chamba, Gular, and Kangra. Under the patronage of Maharaja Sansar Chand in the late 18th and early 19th centuries, Kangra became the most prominent center for the Pahari style.
Topic Buddhist artifacts gallery The Buddhist art section is most known for the sacred relics of Buddha 5th 4th century BC unearthed from Piprawa DISTT Siddharth Nagar in Uttar Pradesh Outstanding specimens of Buddhist art as illustrated through exhibits in stone, bronze, terracotta, stucco, wooden sculptures and painted scrolls or thangkas from Nepal, Tibet, Central Asia, Myanmar, Java and Cambodia which represents the three principal Buddhist forms, Hinayana, Mahayana and Vajrayana. These objects stimulate a sense of devotion, dedication and love for humanity. Topic evolution of Indian scripts and coins gallery In this gallery, there are many large-sized well-lit transparencies on show which are narrating the wonderful story of the development of various Indian scripts and coins. Topic. Bronze gallery Topic. Manuscripts gallery The collection of manuscripts are in various languages and scripts covering a large number of subjects. They are written on different types of materials such as parchment, birch bark, palm leaf, cloth, paper and metals. All the manuscripts represent various religions and sects of the Indian subcontinent covering the period from the 7th to the 19th centuries. Dated manuscripts elaborate the Indian history with authoritative authenticity. Topic. Coins Gallery The Coins Gallery of the National Museum, New Delhi has been set in an innovative manner. It starts from the cowries and ends at the credit cards. The entire history of Indian coinage from about 6th century BCE to the beginning of the 21st century is exhibited. There are various dioramas depicting various techniques of coin production. These coins are rich and authentic source of information on various aspects of ancient, medieval and modern Indian history. Topic: <inaudible> Central Asian Gallery. The vast and varied collection of this gallery was excavated, explored and collected by Sir Oral Stein, one of the major archaeological explorers of early 20th century. He collected these cultural materials from more than 100 ancient cities along the Silk Route during three major expeditions carried out by him in 1900–1901, 1906–1908 and 1913–1916. The collection consists of wall paintings, painted silk banners, sculptures in wood, stucco and terracotta, coins, porcelain and pottery objects, leather, grass and fiber, precious items of gold and silver, religious and secular documents. Topic. Maritime Heritage Gallery Topic. Tanjore and Mysore Paintings Gallery This gallery exhibits the paintings from the two famous schools of South India, Tanjore and Mysore. The themes are Indian mythology, stories from epics, various gods and goddesses. The technique for making a Tanjore painting is also displayed with the help of seven paintings. Topic: <inaudible> Textiles Gallery. The Textiles Gallery exhibits the collection of Indian traditional textiles of the later Mughal period. Cotton, silk and woolen textiles which are woven, printed, dyed and embroidered are exhibited in the gallery. Royal Chamber, it is the particular area which exhibits the use of textiles in royal style. The chamber has embroidered silk carpet on the floor. A cloth ceiling and printed wall clothes cover most of the area. The cover of pillows have very minute Zari and Zardozi work on them. <laughs> Pre-Columbian and Western Arts Gallery The collections of this gallery were donated mostly by Mrs. and Mr. Nasli Hiramonic of New York, in 1966. The objects are primarily from before Christopher Columbus's discovery of North and South America, including objects from Mexico, Peru, Maya, Inca, Northwest Coast of America, Panama, Costa Rica and El Salvador. Topic. 
Tribal Lifestyle of Northeast India Gallery This gallery is dedicated to the states of Northeast India. The eight states of Northeast are called Seven Sisters and One Brother Sikkim states. The eight states have a wealth of cultural handicraft, performing arts and unique traditions. This gallery exhibits traditional artifacts such as dresses, apparels, headgears, ornaments, paintings, basketry, wood carvings, smoking pipes and articles of personal adornments of various tribal groups. <laughs> Shuran Rani Bakliwal Musical Instruments Gallery The collection on display in the Musical Instrument Gallery was donated to the museum by Padamshri late Mrs. Shuran Rani Bakliwal, India's Sarad Maestro. This gallery has a collection of musical instruments in tribal, folk and classical groups. There are also a few 19th-century Western instruments. The collection is divided into three parts such as wind instruments, string instruments and percussion instruments. This gallery also has a sculpture made in bamboo of Goddess Saraswati playing the veena. Wood Carving Gallery The Wood Carving Gallery of the museum not only exhibits artifacts from India, but also from Nepal, Central India and Tibet. This gallery gives glimpses of India's wood carving tradition mainly belonging from 17th to 19th centuries illustrating the different styles of wood carvings from Rajasthan, Gujarat, Orissa and South India. Topic: Arms and Armor Gallery. This gallery exhibits arms from the Stone Age up to the Modern Age. The collection comprises edged weapons, projectiles, smashing weapons, sacrificial and ritual weapons, fire arms, armor for men and animals, ornamental and war accessories. The collection is predominantly Mughal, in addition to Maratha, Sikh, Rajput arms, which are also well represented. Topic. Tradition, art and continuity A gallery with over 200 objects ranging from a wide geographical and social spectrum, acquired from private collectors was added to the museum on 6 February 2014. Various objects on display are a palanquin from the Santhal community, scroll paintings from West Bengal, textiles such as fulkaris from Punjab and bronze sculptures from Bastar, besides terracotta works and basketry. The gallery is a rich representation of art from various parts of India. <laughs> Auditorium Beside the galleries, the museum also has an auditorium with a seating capacity of 250 people. A brief film introducing the museum and its collections is screened in the auditorium regularly. Film shows on art, historical and heritage are also shown. See also Carved wood vahanas in National Museum Gyan Chopper Ivory carved Dashavtar Ivory carved tusk depicting Buddha life stories Jade Collection in National Museum